Why are you so quiet? <laughs> Good evening, how are you? Good. Very nice to see you. Uh, the last time we performed on this stage was in 2019. Um, I think about uh, two months before the pandemic hit. And uh, yeah, it's been a while, so we are really happy to see, to be here again and to see you. Uh, this is also a very special performance because this is our 10th year, uh, the first African music and dance ensemble for as long as I've been here. Um, Thank you. Uh, was in 2011 uh, when I showed up here uh, for the first time. I'm originally from Uganda, but I spent a lot of time in Florida, Tallahassee, before I moved to Vermont. My name is Damascus Kapumbe, and I teach in the music department. I teach ethnomusicology slash musicology, and um, I have had, had the honor and pleasure of directing this wonderful group, um, as well as an uh, Afro pop, another ensemble called Afro pop. Um, tonight, we will be performing a traditional African music mainly from Uganda, which is one of the smallest countries in Eastern Africa. Around Uganda, uh, you will find Kenya to the east, uh, South Sudan to the north, the Democratic Republic of Congo to the west, and Tanzania to the south. Uh, we will be playing a wide range of instruments, chordophones, uh, aerophones, membranophones, idiophones, etc. And these wonderful performers will be telling you all about uh, the songs we will be performing and the instruments before we play music. Uh, we have ten pieces to perform. Uh, the first two, the first piece will be a group piece, uh, followed by six sectional pieces, uh, specifically duets and trios, and we will wrap up the program with three group pieces. Please don't leave after the ninth piece because the real stuff is at the end, the dance. Uh, we will need a few minutes to go dress up. Uh, our gear is very elaborate, but we'll be back soon. I don't think you, can, you will be waiting for more than three minutes. So uh, without further ado, uh, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce the Middlebury African Music and Dance Ensemble. And please be, join me in welcoming these wonderful performers. Uh, well, I've worked so hard. Uh, I've been playing these instruments since I was about four or five, and I never imagined what it would be like to play them during a pandemic, to learn all the songs in the languages they're gonna be singing in, uh, in masks, dancing in masks. Our class meets twice a week for three and a half hours each class period. And they are always there, they show up. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, 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 uh, very impressed and I look forward to uh, celebrating tonight, hopefully. Thank you so much. African music and dance and song performance. Tonight we will start off with a traditional folk song from the Ugandan Kingdom of Uganda, Adaoluma Enyanja, which can be translated to those waves that roar in the lake. This folk song dates to back to King's reigns. This folk song dates to the king's reigns when the king's men proved their worth and courage to him by sailing and operating their boats across choppy and dangerous waters. Such dedication required that a king's subject be as strong and endure the roaring waves of the waters. Moreover, Agaulu Mainanja is also sung by spirit mediums to invoke the god of the lake, Mukasa, which further shows how the song is transcendent and worldly. The song will be played to you by the entire ensemble, featuring the Madinda, a 12-key xylophone, struck by beaters known as Mignolo, and three drums, the Mbutu, Muni, and Galabi. There are two players on each Medina set, one on each side of the instrument. 
There is the Munazi, the player who initiates the piece, the performer of the main melody of a song, and the Muawazi, the player who splits the part, performer of the secondary melody of a song. As the Munazi plays their part in the Medinda, the Muawazi splits this part by playing the offbeat, thereby creating a conversational piece as both players' parts interlock. The element of conversation is a common characteristic of most African musics, and one that you'll encounter in many of, the of tonight's performances. This performance has three parts. The first part introduces the audience to both the Banazi and the Baruzi playing the Medinda together. In the second part, lyrics are introduced to the song that is being performed. And the last part is a recap, where the performers trace their way back to where they started by playing the Medinda together. Enjoy the performance.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we doing? All right. My name is Scott, and this is my partner, Megan. Um, the musical instrument that we're playing right now is a type of xylophone called Madinda, and um, it consists of 12 wooden slabs traditionally placed on two fresh banana stems. But right here, we're just placing them on wooden frames and boxes. Um, of course, we're using sticks to play it. Um, this instrument is tuned to a pentatonic scale on Medina set. Um, so one Medina set can be played by either one person or two people, or sometimes even three people. Um, right now, as you can see, we're using two sets of Medinas, and they are both played by one person. However, if two people were to play on the same Medinda, as we have seen in the opening scene, um, the opening piece, then the person sitting on my side would be called Muawzi, and this means the performer of a song's secondary melody. And the person sitting on the opposite side of me would be called Munazi, the player of the primary melody. On the Muawzi side, the slabs with higher pitches are on the performer's left, and then the lower pitches are on the right. Yep. Um, these two parts interlock to complete the melody of a given Medina song. Personally, I think it's a pretty cool instrument. Yep. Um, the piece we're about to perform is a short but sweet little piece called Ganga Alula. This means Ganga survived narrowly. So what's the story behind that? There was a very cruel king called King Mwanga II. The king had a very beautiful daughter. Her name was Nasolo. Um, so who's Ganga? Ganga was the harper of the band that entertained and played for the king and his family. What did he do? Ganga slept with the king's daughter. Um, the, yeah, the king needed to punish Ganga because he didn't belong to the royal blood. Um, but the, at the same time, the king and Ganga, they had, a very, they had a pretty good relationship. So the king gave Ganga two choices. One, I'm going to kill you right now. Second, I'm going to have to chop your penis off. <laughs> Ganga chose to sacrifice his poor penis. Too bad. But he survived. He survived narrowly. So that's the story behind this, the name Ganga Alula, which is the the piece we're about to perform. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoy our little piece. <laughs>
Hello everyone, my name is John, and these three drums, or ngoma, I'm playing tonight, are part of a drum set known as Bachi Simba, which in Luganda means they planted it. The rhythm that I will be playing for most of the night is also known as Bachi Simba, and later tonight, you will see our dancers perform the steps or movements of the companion Bachi Simba dance. These drums are all made by hand, and as they are made, each drum has a small item placed inside, which is known as the heart of the drum. makes each drum unique. The drums you see here are known as ordinary or party drums. However, other versions of these drums may be known as ritual drums or purpose drums. And these drums are used to solve problems, to provide protection, to state one's identity, or to represent institutions. And the drum to my left and the one directly in front of me are both Mbutu drums, although each has been tuned to a different pitch. The drum to my right is known as Mpunyi, which means humming. The Mpunyi emits the lowest pitch of the Bachisimba drum set and is viewed as the central drum of the group, often establishing the downbeat. Professor Kafumbe has been playing the Ngalapi drum, the skinny one in the back. And later, during the Uganda dance medley, or closing piece, Lieben will play the Namanjolaba drums, which are played with beaters. Tonight, I will perform the song Zoge De, which means they have spoken. The song has four stanzas, and each stanza ends with the line La Bengoma Hue Zogera, which means see how the drums speak. I will sing the song twice, and during the repeat, I will skip the last line, allowing the drums to speak for themselves. Zoge De is an invitation to celebrate the call of the drums, or Ngoma, and is a reminder that just as the player cannot perform without the drum, the drum cannot sing without the player. This attitude of kinship and viewing instruments as extensions of ourselves is fundamental in all traditional Ugandan music. Enjoy. with two additional notes. Today, the Akogo section will be performing the song Pasalomuje, 
which literally translates to a small animal Mujer in Uganda, a Bantu language spoken by the Baganda people of southern or south central Uganda. This song tells the story of a mythical squirrel-like animal with extraordinary abilities that exceed those of humans. Mujer has a wife and can attract women more than men can, and he's able to love women more than men can. This song also references the process of missionization in Uganda during the early 20th century, revealing that Muje recited mass better than any Catholic priest and embarrassed native speakers of English because he could speak the language so much better than them. The arrangement of Kasano Muje will be performing today includes a main part, three variations, and some text. Enjoy. Today we'll be performing a greeting song called Musibia Mutia, which means how has your day been in Luganda, a language spoken by the Baganda people of southern or south central Uganda. The Baganda, who traditionally reside in a kingdom called Buganda, stress the role greetings play in formation and sustenance of communities. The song is played on the Ndongo, which is a bow lyre made with a wooden cavity, nylon strings, banana fiber, and cowhide monitor lizard skin and goat hair attached to the ends. The hair on the ends is also called a beard and is meant to signify the musical instrument's maturity. The ndongo is both melodic and rhythmic, and its music features two interlocking or melodies, 
a primary melody played with the right hand thumb, and a secondary or counter melody played with the left hand thumb and middle fingers. Interlocking is seen as a representation of the broader interdependence that defines everyday life in Uganda and other African societies. In other words, people are interweaved and interconnected in the same way musical notes or parts interlock during music making. In addition to our Ndongo playing, we will also be singing a melody which interweaves with the rest of the piece. Enjoy. Uh, the cylindrical part of the Ndingiri serves as uh, a sound box, 
the song I'm about to perform for you is titled Sarakera. And Sarakera was a brave warrior in the Kingdom of Uganda who had the strength to defeat the likes of the sun. Uh, he was also in, uh, known to drive a car made out of wood, and, and which run on water instead of gas. Uh, so when it rained, the hive would be so wet and smelly to the point where like, the whole village uh, you know, that he's around. The song reveals the colonial influences of, on the Baganda people and how they took foreign instruments and made them their own. Um, but the song also speaks on how the kingdom of Baganda was at war with its neighboring kingdoms. Concern highlights the broader importance of family and community in many African societies. 
and it is sung in Lango, a little language spoken by the Langi people of northern Utah. Enjoy.
we're about to present is a drum work called Echitigida, which is a word from Luganda, from the Luganda language um, of the Baganda people, which translates to groove in English. We will be playing four types of drums. These are the Mpuni, the Mutu, the Ngalabi drum, and the Ngalabi drums, all of which are part of the Ngoma drum collection of the Baganda people of Uganda, East Africa. The fourth set of drums are from is from Ghana, West Africa. The piece Echitivida also showcases musical epicanisms, and these are conversations among drums, improvisation, and layered ostinatos with varied repetition, recurring patterns on top of one another. As observed in some of our earlier pieces, Echitivida will also begin with the riff, which we will play in a call and response format between Professor Kampumbe and the rest of the ensemble. We will then proceed to drum the main rhythm together as an ensemble for a few cycles. The riff will mark the transition into the next section, during which we will each have a chance to perform rhythms that correspond to our needs for 16 beats each. After this riff, we will again mark the transition into the third section. This section will be a call and response between two Ngalabi drums. It is a personification of an argument between two birds. The sharp and swift sounds made by the drums will give an image of wings furiously fluttering as the two birds fight. The beats played during this section will be solely improvised. The fourth and last section of the piece will also be a call and response between Professor Kampumbe and the rest of the ensemble. It will also be improvised. Enjoy.
Hi, my name is Kyle Alexander. Next, we'll be, we will be performing a Ugandan dance medley. Uganda is home to 65 different ethnic groups. Each group has at least 12 distinct music and or dance traditions, five of which you will see tonight. The first is Bachi Simba, a dance performed by the Baganda people of southern or south central Uganda. Each step in Bachi Simba has a different meaning, such as symbolizing the planting of butoke or banana plants. The next dance is Imbalu, a dance from the Bajisu people of eastern Uganda. Imbalu is performed at male circumcision ceremonies that mark a man's adulthood. Dancing before and after the procedure is a symbol of bravery. The third dance is in Dogoro, a dance from the Batoro people of western Uganda. This is a courtship dance in which men prove their ability to care for future wives. The fourth dance is Laraka Raka, another courtship dance, which comes from the Acholi people of northern Uganda. In Laraka Raka, women showcase their intellect, creativity, and beauty to potential husbands through movement. A type of gourd called aguata, which is a key cultural tool and symbol among the Acholi, is used as a musical instrument that gives La Raka Raka its unique sound and character. The final dance we will perform is called Kishino. Kishino is danced by the Bajika people of Western Uganda, specifically those from a region known as Kigezi, which is traditionally very cold. Dance and movement were a way for them to keep warm throughout the winter. Our performance will demonstrate that to the people of Uganda, dance is not just an activity. It is a way of life in which every movement is intentional and has meaning. Enjoy.